Hi folks, welcome to the Kelpie Knits podcast. This is episode three. My name is Ailey. I live in Inverness with my husband Kieran and my puppy Odin. I'm the dyer behind Kelpie Knits. I run my own business. You can find me at kelpieknits.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Kelpie Knits or at Kelpie Knits podcast. You can find me on Facebook as Kelpie Knits. And most importantly, you can find me on Ravelry as The Kelpie Knits. And the Ravelry group for this podcast is just called The Kelpie Knits Podcast. We're going to start things off with just a quick Cal update. The Kelpie Cal 2020 is in full swing. I've had lots of submissions just for this month and we're only not even halfway through February yet. So thank you very much for taking part. They look amazing. If you don't remember, or this is the first time that you've joined us at the Kelpie Knits podcast, if this is the first time, welcome, thank you. The Kelpie Cal 2020 is all about busting your stash yarn. So the rules are very simple. You can have a look at the past two episodes for more guidance or the Ravelry group, that's the main home for the Cal. But basically the only thing that you need to join this Cal is some yarn in your house and a pattern that you want to make. To enter the Cal, you just need to submit a photo of your finished project to the Ravelry group. If you join in, you stand a chance of winning an exclusive sock set dyed by myself as part of my Great Scottish Playlist Mystery Yarn Club. So get involved. It's a great way to use up yarn that you have at home. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need any special equipment or tools or yarn, nothing like that. You just need some stash yarn and a pattern that you want to make. In the meantime, here are some of the projects that have been submitted to the CAL so far this month. They look absolutely amazing and I absolutely love looking through this thread and seeing what you're creating and making. You're all so talented and I'm so jealous. <laughs> As ever, if you're a maker of any kind or a creator to do with fibre, yarn, crochet, knitting, anything at all, please get in touch with me if you are interested in donating a prize for the cow. At the moment, the prize each month is a subscription to my yarn club. I do have a mega prize in mind for the end of the year. But if you're interested in donating to a month or interested in donating to that big prize at the end of the year, you can get in touch with me at kelpienits at gmail.com. That's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me and let me know what you create and what you'd like to send. I've only got one finished object this episode. I've been knitting a lot and the projects that I have at the moment are quite big and I've been spreading my time across all of them so I haven't really got anything finished. So this segment's going to be quite small but works in progress is going to be a bit bigger. <laughs> the first project that I have to show you is this. Right, it's super squishy, it's super vibrant, it's humongous. <laughs> but this is my Lorien hat. I needed a, I don't know if you've ever had this before but I needed a kind of palette cleanser project between big projects. I was getting a bit bogged down to be honest. I felt like I wasn't making much progress with the projects that I have on the needles at the moment. So I needed something in between that I could finish quickly and enjoy working on and that's exactly what this was. This is just your standard beanie hat. Very simple. You can fold it down like this. You can wear it slouchy. But I have, this is a pattern that I put together myself. It's very simple. It's not anything special but I have tried to design it so that it's reversible because I think it looks quite nice. I'm not usually a fan for reverse stockinette but this is quite pretty and if you fold up the brim when it's this way around it still looks nice. I'll put it back around this way. This is the way I like it best. Some stockinette stitch here. So like I said this is my Lorien hat and I've called it that because I use two strands of my Lorien yarn in chunky weight held double to make this really squishy, I don't know if you can even tell how squishy that is. Oh it's just, it is lovely. 
but two strands of chunky yarn held double to make a super chunky weight yarn and this knit up in about an evening maybe two it really didn't take very long at all and I was really impressed I used two skeins of my yarn I had all of this left so oh, this so this from one skein this from another skein and really really happy I had, I haven't decided on a pom-pom yet I might put a pom-pom on it I'm really bad with pom-poms whenever I sew them on I feel like they pop off really easily and I'm just not very good at sewing certainly here you'd have enough left for a little pom-pom messy little yarn ball left there it's super easy super simple I just I used nine millimeter needles and cast on 46 stitches and just knitted what I felt like really um, I should probably try it on and show you okay okay we'll do it we'll do it just so we're clear I don't suit hats you won't see me wearing hats very much in this podcast but I'm gonna try it on for you just so you can see how's that looking so yeah as you can see it's quite a big I hope you can see it's quite a big slouchy comfy hat I have quite a lot of slouch here so if you prefer a beanie or a tighter fit hat, you could make it a lot smaller than I have here. But like I said, I, I didn't really use a pattern. I just kind of went off my own gut instinct here. I could write a pattern up and put it up on the Ravelry group if you were interested in that. If that's the case, maybe let me know in a comment if you're interested in seeing what I did for this. But yeah, this is my Lorien hat. that's it for finished objects like I said I really don't have an awful lot to show this week but I do have a lot of works in progress for you I said that the Lorien hat was a palette cleanser project and this project here is one of the reasons that I really needed it this is a sleeve it's not the whole thing of my Kraken jumper it's the Embrace Octopus Sweater on Ravelry by Maya E. Cerns. I've talked about it in the past couple of episodes, so if you've been keeping up, this won't be new to you that I'm making this, but I'll have a picture of it somewhere on the screen so that if you're joining us for the first time, then you know what it's supposed to look like without me showing you my whole... It's not really a sweater yet, just the body. But this is one of the reasons I needed a little project just to get through and finish, because this has been a real slog. Um, so I'll show you what I have. Since I saw you last time, I have knit from here up. So that's all, but it's all colour work. I said last time I was struggling with the sleeve because I was using double pointed needles and I managed to find a little bamboo circular needle that does the job really, really nicely. And that's made it a lot easier, but oh, I'm, I'm really, really struggling with it. I'm really struggling to keep momentum because I feel like it's never gonna end and I feel like I think part of the problem is I'm not all that happy with the finished result I really regret my yarn choice it's just it's just not really working out properly it doesn't have the right feel I feel like my color work is quite sloppy I've never done a color work sweater before but I feel like the color work just it isn't quite right and there's lots of places where the white is showing through like here I don't know how well you can see that, but the white there are my floats in behind the the blue yarn. And I just feel like it's spoiling it a little bit. And I'm not convinced that when I finish this jumper it's even going to fit Kieran properly. So I'm really struggling to keep motivated with it. Just because I'm not happy with it so far and I'm not convinced that even if I get it done it's going to fit. It's quite difficult to keep going when you're faced with something like that. But I'm soldiering on. That's all I managed in the past two weeks, which is that little colour work section. The pattern now has me casting on the second sleeve, so I need to put this to one side. But I might try and find some stitch holders and reuse the circular needle, because honestly that made this last bit so much simpler than my DPNs. So yeah, not a huge amount of progress. I am pleased that I got the colour work done. Really happy, because I was putting that off for ages. So it's a good milestone to have this sleeve complete, but ugh, I'm, I'm struggling to cast on sleeve number two. That's why I haven't taken these onto stitch holders yet. I just don't have the energy. <laughs> I don't, do you have a project like that? Have you ever had a project where you struggled to get through it? A lot of the people I talk to are such committed knitters and 
I feel so bad when I feel like this is about a project and I just can't keep going. So if, if you have a project that's a bit of a beast and you haven't been able to get through it, share it below. Make me feel a bit better, please. Work in progress number two. Now this one I'm a lot more excited about than my Kraken jumper. I have finished my Mermaid Day sock. It's just a little shorty, it's not very long. I'll let you have a good look here. So I have a slip stitch heel and just your bog standard sock really. Very simple, very easy. Uh, these are just Nipro plastic sock blockers. They're my first sock blockers, I never had any before. I only bought them just the end of last year. Never had any before. Yeah, this is my finished sock. It didn't really take all that long. Once I decided, I think it was last week after the podcast, I felt bad that I hadn't even looked at it for the last episode. So I picked it up and, and ploughed away at it and it finished reasonably quickly. And I'm really happy with it, it's so cute. Now, this is my Mermaid Days colorway. From Kelpie Knits. This is what it looks like when it's all knit up. It's absolutely gorgeous. So bright. So that's why this is my Mermaid Day socks. But I have a fiendish plan. I decided to knit this sock because it would be a good sample for the website for my yarn and I've decided that rather than making it an identical pair I am going to make the sister sock to this in its sister colourway. Now the sister colourway to Mermaid Days is Kelpie Nights, which is this one here. It's very dark, still very vibrant, there's lots of rich purples and turquoises and still a little bit of pink in there. So I've decided I'm going to make exactly the same sock but with this colourway instead, especially since I have this cake, I used the first part of this on my mermaid top by Rebecca McKenzie last last summer, geez oh, last summer, and this is what I had left over, so it would be good to use it for another sample knit for the shop. I just, I think they would be a really lovely combination. I've used them held together, I don't know how well you can see that, maybe this is just a blob. I've used them held together for the mermaid top and they were absolutely stunning but I just think that they're really lovely together. I think it would be really fun to have a deliberately mismatched pair but ones that look kind of similar so hopefully I'll have this at least cast on for next time but I've since cast on a much more exciting pair of socks so it might have to wait a little bit. My third work in progress is another one that I talked about last time. I did warn you that I'm a slow knitter so this is probably going to happen quite a lot. It takes a few episodes for me to finish a project. But this is my Mama Vertebrae cardigan that I'm making for my mum. And last time I spoke to you I had cast it on in that week and I'd gotten quite far through it, I was on the body. Well, now I am almost finished the entire thing. I have both of my sleeves here and they look lovely, they're three quarter sleeves, like that, and it's just looking really nice. It's looking lovely, it's a fairly, fairly standard cardigan, not, I don't want to say there's nothing special about it because it's a lovely pattern to work, but it's very simple and very easy to follow. The only thing that I have left to do is pick up all of these stitches around the front of the cardigan. So that whole loop right there around there, pick that up and then add some ribbing to finish it off. And that's why this isn't finished yet because I loathe picking up stitches, especially that many. It's, it's quite a task to pick up all the stitches from all the way around. And I just haven't psyched myself up to do it yet. Again, that's probably one of the reasons why I started the Lorien hat actually, because I had my problems with my Kraken jumper and I have to pick up all the stitches on this. It's quite a lot, really. I hadn't really put that together, but this probably wasn't helping my feeling of just needing to work on something else for a while. I said earlier, this is the Mama Vertebrae cardigan. It was designed by Kelly Van Niekirk and I'm using the Rowan Pure Wool Superwash Worsted. 
for this in the color Mallard and it's this gorgeous turquoise teal kind of color which is my mum's favorite I think I said that in the last episode so I'm hoping that she likes it this is a belated Christmas gift so I just need to get my act together for that one and get picking up stitches and knitting in the ribbing. This next work in progress will probably not look all that different even though I have worked on it. Um, I picked it up over the weekend and I've added some but this is the start of my Kyler shawl by Isabel Kramer. So I'll try and hold it up for you. I only have this point so far so it's about that wide and just goes down to this little point. I'll see if I can have something on the screen or something pop up to show you what I had last time and what I have now. But it's this is a very meditative knit. Um, it has these zigzags in the lace and it's quite repetitive. At the moment I'm on a 15 row repeat and I'm just working through that and it's been really easy. It's nice to settle into although I found I picked it up more when my husband was away this weekend just passed because I have to concentrate on it otherwise I'll muck up the lace. I find that I muck up the lace more when I'm trying to carry a conversation or even when I'm trying to watch TV. I kind of, I need some quiet and some dedicated time to work on it and I got some so there's a little bit of progress on this. The yarn, I have mixed feelings on the yarn. The yarn is very lightweight and creates a really lovely fabric because this is knit on four millimeter needles. Four millimeter needles. So the fabric is lovely and drapey, it's really nice, but the yarn itself, I find that I'm splitting stitches a lot when I don't normally. It's not very tightly spun. The plies aren't solid. So there's times where I'm going into stitches and I'm I'm splitting them when I shouldn't be. It was stashed yarn, so I'm not complaining too much. But I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't think I would get it again, I think is the best way to say it. I don't think I would get this yarn again, but for this shawl and this purpose, I think it's gonna work quite well. So yeah, this is my Kyler shawl. I'm really, really excited to show you this next cast on. I've been so excited to share it with you since, probably since about last Friday, last Saturday, when I cast it on. I couldn't wait to show it to you because I'm so proud of myself. This is my first ever toe up sock. Can you believe it? I'm so proud of myself. So proud of myself that I've started one. And I don't know what I was such a baby about. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. So I'm to give you some context in case this is the first episode that you're that you're watching. I was saying in previous episodes that I had all these scraps from my advent calendar and I didn't want to waste them. It felt silly when you you just get 10 grams of each color if you're leaving half. That's a significant amount of your advent calendar that you're just not using. And what I wanted to do was make a pair of scrappy socks with them. But I knew in my heart of hearts that my usual cuff down technique, which I used for these, this is cuff down, nice and easy. I knew that technique wasn't the best because it's an irregular amount of yarn. I didn't know how long I would be able to make the socks and I didn't want to overestimate how much yarn I had and then not have enough to finish the sock. But I knew it would cause more problems than it would solve doing a cuff down. So. I asked in the podcast if anyone had any recommendations for toe-up patterns, any tips, because I'd never done it before and was a, a bit intimidated by the new technique. And I, do, I took your advice. So many people got in touch with pattern recommendations and video tutorials, which I watched lots of. They were so helpful. Thank you so much. I can't remember everyone individually who left a comment, but it, it really, really helped. And this is the result. I've barely been able to put them down since starting them. Only one so far, but I haven't been able to put it down. The progress of the colours is just so hypnotic. Now what I've tried to do is maintain a kind of colour gradient for these. 
and I'm, I'm so happy with it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The yarn is from my needle and thread advent calendar that I got for Christmas 2019. Christmas just passed. Again, I think some of the colours are going to be full skeins, but this mini set isn't available anymore. And I just, I, I can't put them down. I can't stop working on it. I want to work on it all the time. Oh, but I did have one disappointment while working on my sock the other night. For the first time ever, I had a needle break on me. This is one of my Nipro needles. And I was absolutely heartbroken. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm I'm not a tight knitter. Usually if I'm looking at gauge or if I'm trying to get a gauge, I'm always a little bit over at least. So I, I don't knit particularly tightly, but I was just working away on the sock and it just snapped. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna speak to Knit Pro and see if there's anything I can do, if I can get it replaced because I, I love these needles. It's one of the, f it's the first proper double pointed needle set that I ever got and I got it for my birthday just in October. I'd be sad if I was a man down already. It, they haven't lasted very long and I haven't used this size of needle yet and it snapped on its first use. So I'm hoping I can get that sorted out. This toe up sock pattern is called Vanilla Sock with Gusset and Choice of Heel by Jo Tor, I believe. I think it's a free pattern. I went with a free one just while I got the hang of the technique and this one's been fantastic. The only thing that I've struggled with is you are asked to do quite a lot of maths to work out how long this section needs to be before you start on your gusset increases and it's taken me a little while to get my head around that and I'm still not entirely sure if this sock is going to fit me. I prefer getting a, well, a pattern that explains exactly what to do for this size rather than having to work out those kind of measurements on my own just because I'm not confident yet I haven't done it but on the whole very easy to follow I did find that with the toe I used Judy's magic cast on like the pattern asks for but starting it off and then increasing I don't know how well you can see that but increasing here for the toe felt a lot like a hexi puff for the beekeeper's quilt by Tiny Owl Knits. It felt a lot like making a little hexi puff so when I got to sort of this point I was expecting to come back in and then sew it up and, and fill it but you just keep going. So I'm glad that I can finally share this with you because I've been so excited to just show you that I'm giving it a go, I'm trying it. I was really nervous, I settled in for an evening give it a go and it's working out really well. So this, maybe you could use this next time you come across a technique you want to try and you don't think you can do it. You can, <laughs> because if I can do this, you could do probably pretty much anything. Before I get into shop news, I asked in the Ravelry group if you guys had any questions for me at all knitting or otherwise and I got one question and it was about the podcasts that I like. Now I had a think, I assume it was knitting podcasts but it's not only knitting podcasts that I listen to or watch so I thought of a little a little mixture that I'll give you for podcasts that I listen to while I'm working or while I'm knitting. In terms of knitting podcasts, I don't think you could really do any better than Fibre for the People. Uh, Taylor Earle runs Fibre for the People. Her yarn is spectacular. Seriously spectacular. If you are a fan of hand-dyed yarn, you need to know who she is and what she's about. She's running her own business from her home, much like I am and she works so hard and has a real passion and understanding for how yarn works, how dye works and just how to use colour to create something absolutely amazing. She has a few videos on her YouTube channel. She runs the Wool Needles Hands podcast which is actually what got me into knitting podcasts in the first place. I didn't really watch them before I found hers. And she talks about her knitting and some of her dyeing and it's just really pleasant. It's really nice to sit with a cup of tea and listen to or watch, I suppose. So definitely check out Fibre for the People. That's the name of her YouTube channel now. If 
you need one knitting podcast well if you need one knitting podcast I'd want it to be this one if you need to have two knitting podcasts mine <laughs> and fibre for the people another one would be the we so and so knitting podcast I mentioned Kaz in the last episode of this podcast she's amazing and so lovely she's running a giveaway at the moment uh, where you could win a skein of my yarn she's so comforting to listen to I just I love it she lives in Fort William which isn't too far from here I'm based in Inverness and it's nice just to hear a, a friendly voice <laughs> in a knitting podcast it's nice to hear another Scottish voice another Highlander so definitely check out the We So and So podcast you need to be on that if you like knitting podcasts another knitting podcast that I would really recommend would be the Corner of Craft podcast super pleasant super lovely to listen to I, I just I love it Hannah runs the Corner of Craft she weaves her own stitch markers and dyes her own yarn based on Dungeons and Dragons which I love by the way amazing but her podcast is very it's polished but still feels comfortable it's not rigid which I worry that mine is sometimes I'm still learning it's very comfortable and very welcoming and I I really really enjoy it and I like I like when I see that she's uploaded a video because it means I can again I can sit with my cup of tea cup of coffee and just chill out and knit for a little while so the corner of craft that's another podcast I would recommend there are lots of other knitting podcasts that I watch. I'm going to put them in a list on the screen, I think is probably easiest, so that you can check all of them out and suss out what it is that you like and what you like to watch. When I don't want a knitting podcast, I generally gravitate to true crime podcasts. That's I, It's a rabbit hole that I could fall down for an incredibly long time. And I do quite regularly. So I have a few true crime podcasts that I listen to. One that I'd want to mention that doesn't really fit into that genre is called Lore, L-O-R-E, and it's it's basically a retelling of myths, legends, ghost stories, that kind of thing, and it's it's phenomenal. It's really well done, it's really well produced, and weirdly soothing. Even if it's a creepy story, you find yourself lulled by Aaron Mankey's voice into feeling calm and just being swept away by this tale that you're listening to. So I'd recommend Lore, L-O-R-E. There are a whole range of true crime podcasts that I think are phenomenal. I think I'll put them in a list on the screen too. I think that would be easier. But true crime isn't for everybody, I understand that. I have always been interested in true crime. It's, it's just been a part of my life since I was quite young. So that's what I'm interested in. But I do know that there's quite a big community of people who feel the same way so if you're interested in that if that's your thing then definitely check these out that's it for knitting content i'm gonna talk a little bit about shop news so if you're not here for that if you're not interested in that it's been lovely having you and i'll see you in two weeks on the 28th of february in terms of shop news there's one big piece of information that i announced earlier this week and only want to talk about a little bit here. On the 15th of February, so tomorrow, if you're watching this video the day that it uploads, the prices on the Kelpie Knit site are going to change. I, f I found this difficult to introduce and I found it difficult to bring up. I should really have changed the prices quite a while ago, but I didn't. And the reason for the change is because I've found that the number of orders I've been getting has increased and it's fantastic and it's amazing. So I've had to take Kelpie Knits full time so that I have the time to get all of the orders out and process everything myself. But because I've had to take it full time, the prices of my yarn mean that I'm not making enough to live at the moment. I, It was fine before when I had another form of income, but now I don't. So it's, I'm just not making enough money to, to live on. That's... That's basically it. <laughs> so all of the skeins are going to go up by one or two pounds, not any more than that. And the birthstone collection are going to remain at ten pounds a skein because I just didn't feel comfortable with getting rid of the ten pound price point I had started with. It didn't feel right. I want to make sure that yarn, hand dyed yarn, is accessible to anyone that wants it, not just people that can afford it. The birthstone collection will stay at ten pounds and will always be ten pounds. And 
a few of the other colourways are going to vary between 12 and 14 pounds. The BFL base has, I can't think off the top of my head, it's gone up by a pound or two and so has the new mohair base but only by one pound or two pound not by an extortionate amount because that's that's not what I'm about. I hope you understand it's not been an easy decision to make because I want a hand dyed yarn to be available to everybody but the truth I need to make a living I need to be fair to myself and I don't want to sell what I do short because I'm really passionate about it I love dyeing yarn I love having my own business and if I want to continue doing that then the prices need to go up a little bit and that's just the way it is the yarn club won't be affected the price of the yarn club will stay the same no changes there and that's it that's it for the podcast this week I think this is going to be a bit of a shorter episode I don't know if I've spoken too quickly or it maybe just recording has flown this time maybe I'm getting a bit more used to it I feel like this has gone really quickly apologies if it's only going to be 10 minutes long thank you for watching to the end if you've made it this far I really really appreciate it thank you for all of your comments on the past two videos I do read them all it sometimes takes me a while to get back to everybody as I read them but I do read them all and I'm really really appreciative especially to everyone who who spoke about my granda and his collection that I talked about in the last video that meant a great deal to me so thank you for taking the time to do that this is a fortnightly podcast so the next episode will be in two weeks on the 28th of February so I'll see you at the end of the month if you need me in the meantime you can email me at kelpynits at gmail.com you can find me on Ravelry as the Kelpie Knits, and the Ravelry group is on there for the podcast too Kelpie Knits podcast we're up at about 60 members now there's a lot of people hanging out over there and it's really really good fun so if you're looking for a knitting group if you maybe don't have one locally come and join us we're a lovely bunch you can also find me on instagram at kelpie knits and at kelpie knits podcast i also have a facebook page called kelpie knits which i need to stop neglecting and start posting on a bit more often and happy knitting Enjoy your two weeks. I look forward to seeing you again and I'll speak to you soon.